Hello and welcome back to Stop and Go F1 for another lovely early morning video. This time talking about Aston Martin. We just just watched their launch there. It's an interesting launch they're doing today because uh, here we are in the UK at 8 a.m. and they've just released like a little video, like yes, over a minute long. And it is like, right, here's what the car looks like. On their Twitter account last night, they said the ATM will be the first look of the car, followed by coverage throughout the day uh, as they build towards um, testing. Apparently, there will be a shakedown at Silverstone today, so we may actually see proper images of this car on the track by the end of the day. We'll have to wait and see. But shall we just have a look at it then? Shall we just have a look? Here it is, everyone. This is the 2024 Aston Martin Formula One car and from this angle here not too much difference um, really because there isn't much difference at all um, what there is is there is a new sponsor here Banco Master whatever the, hell, whatever the hell they are but there is one big significant difference in terms of looks from this car to last year's car and that's this car has got quite a bit more exposed carbon you can see it already here underneath the car uh, is a lot of exposed carbon but from this specific angle you can't see the full extent of it if we go here oh, these quality images aren't great there you go that's better if we go here you can see that these kind of lines down the side of the car on both sides are fully exposed carbon as well it's just like the tip of the side part that has been painted with the aston martin green and yes right down the middle um because it's very early there isn't anyone releasing like properly high quality images i think these are all screenshots that i got off twitter from the actual video but you can see yes a lot of exposed carbon going on here around here back there on the uh, rear wing on the front wing of course it's not as bad as the likes of Haas uh, and Alpine and um, uh, steak whatever they're called steak f1 team kick sauber but it's a lot more than last year because last year I used to say especially at the start of the year we have all these cars with the exposed carbon on them but the two fastest cars of the grid at the start of last year were Red Bull and Aston the two cars with the least exposed carbon so it appears that either Aston are just searching for a few milliseconds in terms of pace or they do desperately need to save weight because this of course is another evolution of their car from last year when you think about it Aston realistically should be a year behind the likes of your Red Bulls and your Ferraris because they switched concepts in uh, 2021 so maybe they still are fine-tuning things a little bit Dan Fallows has been given more time to work on this car than he was last year. It's an interesting one to keep an eye on this year because I think Aston are in for something really, really important this year. This is probably the most important year in their F1 uh, history thus far. Just because last year they did so well, especially at the start of the year. They massively dropped off. It came back a little bit towards the end. But if you look at the start of last year where they were easily the second best car on the grid they need to prove that that wasn't a fluke they need to prove that they can build upon that because if you think was it 2016 where Williams was like the second or third best car and the next year they fell away and then a few years later they were scoring zero points in a season Aston don't want to be another Williams but they had one good year Aston's whole thing whenever you hear Lawrence Stroll talk is they're building and building they got this five-year plan or whatever it is now and they will be challenging for championships come 2026 and they're building upon that all the time in order for that to come true they need to prove that they can stick around for more than one year so it's massively important for Aston to have another successful season this year if you know equally as successful as they were last year if not better can they avoid that drop off that they had last year where they brought the upgrades in and it didn't work it made the car slower now some would say maybe that was due to a flexi front wing maybe it was maybe it wasn't they can try and avoid that if they if they want try and avoid having a a issue with the front of the car 
Also massively important this year is Fernando Alonso's contract is up. And we know Alonso is not one to stick with a team if he doesn't think they're going in the right direction. And he will leave, especially if a Mercedes seat is available to him. So Aston needs to prove itself as a competitor, but also prove to Alonso that they can do this for a long time. Because I think he wants to be here for a long time. So, yeah, this is really interesting from Aston to see what they're going to do this year. Definitely ones to keep an eye on. Oh, there we go. A few more photos have slowly been released. God, it's taken a while for the photos to come out today. I don't know why. Because, you know, Aston normally send press launches out to all these companies and they can just have the photos. But again, good, high-quality images is a bit annoying today. And I don't know why. But yeah, it's interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing what we learn throughout the rest of the day. Their whole thing is that they're hyper-focused. I don't really know what that means. Here's another image they've just released um, of kind of like a top-down front view. And there you can see very much, as I think I said it on the Alpine launch video, but there's very much a template to F1 liveries this year, and it is just like a straight line down the middle. Normally, this block here of the front wing, that normally isn't coloured. So, to have a bit of colour there is different from the normal F1 template for 2024. But, you know, from this angle, you can really see how little is painted. You can see a little bit on the edges there, but that is just straight carbon fibre down here and down here. So... Very interesting from Aston to have to do some weight saving, but not as much as everyone else. Um, oh, here we go, everyone. I'm just going to just show you the uh, image straight from here, actually, because they've released the top-down view. This is what I wanted to see. Um, one second. It's loading, everyone. This is what happens when you make videos immediately after these things come out. So uh, where's that image gone? There it is, right. So here is the top-down view of the car, and yeah, it's basically just, it's followed the, the arrow of the car, but it's basically a straight line right down the middle with that and that there. So yeah, Aston going with kind of more aggressive approach there. In terms of actual bodywork, it doesn't look too massively different from last year maybe those side pods are a bit different but you know with these renders you can never really trust what bodywork looks like so who's to know uh what's going to go on there but yeah it's it's a good looking car it looks the same as last year like i said in my uh live best liveries worst liveries video i'm not a huge fan of aston green so this isn't necessarily for me but you know it looks good um, just looking at some quotes that have come out from Dan Fallows. He said, we've made changes all over the car. It's very different in many ways. The majority of the parts have changed, uh, but it's still really uh, essentially a strong evolution of last year's car. We've, we have kind of built it on the end of the AMR 23. The obvious things that you'll see are different are things like the nose and the front wing. Bodywork will be different, but there's also quite a lot of stuff under the hood which hopefully you won't see. We'll obviously try and keep some of that under wraps. So yeah, um, he says, Fernando, as we're both our drivers, is quite vocal about what he wants to see on the car, how the car is performing, and actually that kind of feedback was we really, really relish. That's exactly what we want to know, how the car feels, how he feels the car can go faster. I think that's what the great drivers can tell you, is where the car is going to be faster. Certainly straight line speed and making sure the car is as efficient as possible has been a big focus of the winter. I think that's something that we've managed to achieve on this year's car. So yeah, they seem very confident, they seem very happy with the step forward that they've made over the uh, winter break. There was all the stuff from Alonso a few weeks ago when he first went back to the factory, first went in the simulator, and he seemed very happy, seemed very confident. Um, we'll probably see him at the shakedown if that is happening today, because I, I doubt they'll have Lance Stroll driving the car for the first time. Uh, it was around this time last year that he broke his wrist, so maybe no cycling for Lance Stroll uh, this year. But yeah, this is very, very interesting. Um, I'm just going to quickly look through everything else just to make sure I haven't missed anything. I think we're okay. Uh, just scrolling through Twitter, it appears that that is everything. The only thing is Fernando Alonso has come out and made a comment on Lewis's move to Ferrari, saying it wasn't his childhood dream 12 months ago, but now it is. Thank you, Fernando, 
for that. Fantastic stuff. Right, there you go. Let me know what you think of this car. It looks good. It's a it's an Aston with some exposed carbon fibre. Right, that's it. I'll be back tomorrow. Who's tomorrow? It's Ferrari tomorrow. Yes, I love the Ferraris. They're always beautiful. There won't be any exposed carbon there, will there? Right, I will see you tomorrow for Ferrari. Unless, of course, any breaking news happens and I have to come back later on today. But who, who knows in Formula 1 at this point? Anything could happen at any time. Until then, though, have a good one. I'll see you later. Goodbye.